as a subgroup of us as a town versus the school um, because of the fields and such. So I don't know if we have a copy of it. Do they have it? BMIU, I can get it off and I can yeah, send, send it to them. Yeah, because there's some stuff in there that probably is, you know, going to be near and dear to your hearts. You know, the fields and such, you know, and the gymnasium and such. Sure. No, none of you made it? I know that you were invited. I went to one of the meetings and mm -hmm. spent a lot of time talking about trash okay. removal and outhouses. Yep. Yeah. On the community center? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you were at that one, right? No, no I think, I know that was the last time I think I talked to you guys. Do we have a, um, a total of what's currently in the um, rec committee? It'll, it'll just take a second to get it. A statement? Statement, yes. Yep. Thank you. Um, question I have is the funds that you collect. Do you collect funds for basketball, softball? We don't for collect in, Goss, in Dumbarton for, for softball. Yeah. That all goes through Gosstown. Historically speaking, one of the other initiatives that we're facing as a town, we have a public meeting on the 27th to address are we transitioning our Babe Ruth program to both. Yeah. Uh, we still utilize the fields through Gosstown. We have in the past. Gosstown has supplied us the outhouses we mentioned before. That is part of what they supply. We don't have to do that for REC. Um, but for us, the softball program is um, involves a cost because of maintenance of the field, um, more so than just grass. You know, some of the things that you need, such as what we use when you guys, I mean, stone dust and those types of things. Stone dust, wine. Bleachers we bought a couple of years ago. Now, which fields are you talking about? Too? Some fields are our our, our, our dumb garden specifically. So there's a line item for budget for softball because there's items that we need to address from a town perspective, not necessarily mm -hmm. for What's the um, the thought process of going from Boston to Bow? I mean, uh, it's the synergy between the school kids. Right. No, no, I understand, but as far as the, um, the financial and the, the actual. Uh, there'd be no financial, as I understand. I've been speaking with the district commissioner of the Babe Ruth program for mm -hmm. softball. Uh, originally, many of you may have been involved in it a few years ago. I selected Boston. And that was going from what's called Little League to Babe Ruth. So there's a cost associated with becoming affiliated with Babe Ruth. Since we're already affiliated, there's no cost. So really, it's... Uh, oh, I know our girls went to Bow for a while, and then they, were, yep. they went to Gosstown. Yeah, so that was a Little League, Babe Ruth type of transition. So right now, it's just Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth, and it's called Districting. So we're looking potentially with the public's opinion to see if we can redistrict back to Bow. Because of the school board, there's some synergy and some obviously interest from the public that has come up to us with girls that play softball to say, hey, should we get playing? I did last year, post that on a website. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So last year, what we did was um, we actually had by mm -hmm. um, waiver, excuse me, some girls actually played in ball, mm -hmm. and the majority of girls continued to play in golf. So, Babe Ruth Commissioner said that there's no more waivers that are permissible, so we're trying to, as an organization, figure out what we're going to do with the recreation for the that's our first meeting, and mm -hmm. I guess the 27th, I think, is what we posted in the library. So. Next, I know, was part of the, the group that switched over to Gosstown years ago. Yeah, and for the reasons that we switched over, and I still felt from a subject matter expert standpoint, Larry Walmser quite a bit, mm -hmm. who was involved as well, and uh, she provided me a significant amount of background, mm -hmm. so I was able to research and not necessarily undo what we did. It's very different mm -hmm. now, because I said Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth versus Little League, Babe Ruth is mm -hmm. different. Um, oh, yeah, no, it was, it was, so it's just a straight reprogramming thing, and right, if they're willing to accept us in Bow, which they are, mm -hmm. Coxon would still have us, so it's just figuring it out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, I mean, so you know, the softball will be run through Bow, and you know, we'd just be like an ancillary field for them, correct? And their, their program? If you move to Bow? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, there wouldn't be a, a dump. Again, I could come back here in two months and tell you that we have a Dunbar team, but we just participate with Bo. Mm -hmm. But as I understand the process to go, we would um, integrate with Bo and have girls from Bo and then Dunbar and Ron, the same team. It would be mm -hmm. a unique team for Dunbar if we have for basketball. That's how it used to be, I think, way back when. Well, it was a Dunbar specific team. With right. Bo. Yeah, with Bo. And then I know when it came to Gosson, it was the whole idea was to integrate them so they you know, were playing with girls that were they'll be one school with at yep. the time. So. Yes, my daughter played when it was specifically with ball way back in earlier days. And then just after she got done is when mm -hmm. you or whoever moved it over to Goffstown. 
I think the big push was because it was, you know, and I mean no disrespect to both the time, but it was a better program in Gosstown. Yeah, and that's where our, we were concerned. Heidi's been involved in softball mm -hmm. longer than I, and I've been involved. That's yeah. It. Well, I mean, you know Bruce Ran, I've known him yeah. for decades. So I've seen Bruce I've seen him before, and yeah. I grew up in Gosstown, so I remember mm -hmm. seeing him when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good guy, he knows his stuff. Yeah, so we were happy to, I mean, I like Gosstown, I like mm -hmm. the people, and they've been coached there a while, mm -hmm. and uh, so we let them know what we were going to do as well. Mm -hmm. They understand, obviously, the role. Did you get a chance to go to the statement? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay
can't call him. Oh, that drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. no, you might be able to call him. I'm not sure. But yeah, but I talk way faster than I tell you. Call him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't type yeah. 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 <laughs> no, and, and the reason why I say it is because we want to do a thread. I mean, some yeah. of the items yeah, and, and the theories behind the check fund, as we've talked about, are big expenses. Okay, mm -hmm. so I recently had run a scoreboard budget to mm -hmm. determine the scoreboard. If you've seen it, needs to be replaced. It's, mm -hmm. it's original to the gym. The, the, yeah, I mean, interrupt you for a second. Sure. Yeah. Speaking of scoreboard, that's part of the MOU. MOU yeah. And the town and the school are school putting together are pulling a uh, capital reserve. Yep. Yeah. And they're going to expand it this year to include not just kitchen equipment, but yeah. you know, tables, chairs, scoreboard, anything of that nature that's in that yeah. community yeah. center. Right. So that. Yeah. So prior to this year, right, our thought was, if you think about it, so when I went through, we had three. In, when we had three um, estimates, excuse me, I'm trying to mm -hmm. think of the right word, Don. Yeah. They ranged from three thousand. To six thousand dollars. Oh, I don't doubt it. You tell me uh, my whole basketball budget isn't forty five hundred bucks a year. I'd be I can't do that, right? So when we were talking about originally the Warren Warren articles, how can we accumulate funds, mm -hmm. either surplus or, or encumbered funds, which I don't think they encumbered funds, whatever, right. so that we can have that one time expense that we can forecast. So right now we we know we want a scoreboard. We know we want dugouts in the softball. Like mm -hmm. there's expenses that we want to use the checkbook mm -hmm. for. But we also want to leverage, obviously, budget stuff for things that are not user. Because you can say basketball is a user fee, and I get that. Those are the players. They should pay for it. But uniforms, they don't take home. That's a town property. I have to retain those every year. right? The basketballs, those kids don't get basketballs. So there's an ongoing cost. And I think from a budgetary standpoint, the basketball budget years ago was to pay for the ML, uh, MBL. It, before it was whatever, Manhattan Valley, yeah, Trimont Valley, Trimont. Trimont basketball. So we paid one hundred and twenty-five dollars mm -hmm. per team, mm -hmm. and our town is getting bigger with or more, po more popular with the town. That before I didn't have to account for in registration fees because the league was covered by what we did with registration fees. Where now is we're taking that money from other sources, mm -hmm. and that money's going up because we're having more and more teams. One hundred and thirty-six players is the most I've had in six years. So. And the oldest team. The high school my son is on. You should see the uniform. They don't fit. You the bought clothes. the uniforms. I mean, they really, don't I'm not lying. I had to go out and purchase shorts for them because yeah. there's no shorts that fit those boys. And that's one of the things. Well, we never supply shorts. So <laughs> uh, well, they do now. Yeah, they, they have. Them. They, may, they may not. Yeah, they may they do. Yeah. And the girls' softball does too because I started because I donated. One year, the year my daughter left, well, I maybe donated some, some brand of the new that using jerseys and, and yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, they're blue and short. You know. um, so it looks when we bad. think about that, my estimates for uniforms are forty-five dollars a jersey, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So that it's consistent. So when you're talking a, a high school team of fourteen boys at forty-five dollars, so that's where we uh, mm -hmm. intention is said, hey, that checkbook's going to be used to fill those gaps, yep. to buy the sign that's in mm -hmm. front of the library, which is something that came out of the checkbook. So we think that the checkbook is essential to how we operate when we take a longer term vision than just mm -hmm. this year. Oh, not the vision, that part. Just yeah. want to make sure that we're on, all on the same page on how we're... Yeah, it's not that we're not going to buy a field. I mean, that's obviously not going to happen, and that's not our intent. But we also want to spend frivolously where we're like, hey, let's buy dugouts, scoreboards, uniforms, and have that thing go from 17 grand or whatever it is to zero in year one. Mm -hmm. To us, that's not a reasonable solution. So we try to balance, and if you look at this year's budget, if you want to transition, I don't want to keep you here all well, night. Well, I know why your other members here. I just want you to educate me, because I, I must be naive to this, or whatever the case may be, but the community center, mm -hmm. how does that become the school's, or the school board's issues? Like, it's a community center, so therefore the town is responsible for that, correct? <laughs> You want to handle that? I mean, I couldn't yeah. make that meeting, and I apologize. So if you can help me educate no, this so I don't okay. get angry about it. Oh, it's um, yeah. it's kind of a, a fuzzy gray area. We worked out an MOU with them recently over... What's the acronym, if you can yeah. imagine? MOU, uh, uh, Memorandum of, of Understanding or Agreement. Right. Sorry, MOU. I mean, uh, we, throw, we throw around acronyms all day long. Like so really job to speak. Um, so we worked out an agreement this year, and Lena will get you a copy. Um, and it was kind of to, um, you know, understand who's funding what over in that building and, you know, around the building, not just sure. yeah, in that room, but around yeah. the building on the campus. So, um, you know, we had these separate funds that supported the kitchen and chairs, and, but it didn't support the scoreboard and yeah. other things. 
So this year what we negotiated with them is there'll be a warrant article on their side of the house because that's how um, I think theirs was set up. So it's going to get yep. renamed. Okay. And it's going to, and I don't remember the exact name, but it's going to be more of a community fund thing. And it'll include all of that equipment, including the school board. So, so it's, it's a, is it a shared expense? So yeah, the town it's, contributes. It's, who do I ask? So we're not taking all well, of you, the For you folks should bring it to us right. as the town mm -hmm. because we're your yeah, conduit to it back to the school board. So if you've got that request, make the request. We'll coordinate with them and you know get everybody talking. So you saying this year let it go, and then next year? Well, for the school well after after the um, um, the vote town vote. vote in March, yeah. and then okay. if it all and I'm sure they'll you know if it gets renamed and then then it'll be available for you know replacement of the uh, school board. Okay. But this, we put money. The town does when I say we. Into that fund, and I think the up fund to is going to cap right? out at yeah. ten grand now, yeah. or it caps out at five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if the, we need to buy chairs, they won't. Because right now you've got chairs over there that belong to the town and the school, yeah. and they're different colors. Well, just well, so you know, they are. But but, but but and they also store them in different rooms yeah. because this is the school and this is the town. And I didn't know that even until I was putting chairs away one night and was right. not right. aware that there was a. Crossing going on, it got corrected on that, so I didn't know that. So I was scolded and fixed it, and things went went okay. So it just didn't make sense. So we've kind of pulled it all together anyway. That's what we're hoping to do here uh, after the uh, town vote in March. Is you'll have a fund that will support that room, including the school board chairs, tables. And that consists of the softball field also, or is that still the that's town's? Different. No, no, that's. The town. Still, the town that okay. that wasn't part that's of that. Amp. I mean, the the field was is covered there, but not um, in the same sense. way. It's more like the school has to police the grounds before the school day yeah. to make sure that it's safe. It's that kind of thing. It oh, wasn't okay. the maintenance of the field, but it was more like his what their duties are. Um, yes. Also, it outlines you'll, you'll see, but also outlines the duties of anybody who wants to use that building. Because right now, people go in, there's no custodian, and they leave a mess. And, and that's been a problem with school because now they've got on Monday morning have to have somebody go fix yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. right. So it's an added cost to, to all of us when that happens. And it's also developed some policies. Right. That, yeah, so they're procedures. working. Yeah, they're working on policies as well that are tied to that agreement that hopefully will make mm -hmm. it easier and better understood for all of us when we need to use that room. Yeah. So in your opinion, right. I, mean, I, think I just want to ask one question. Can we answer, finish? Make sure we answer his first. Absolutely, Please. you did. Thank you very much. Okay. Right? Because it's within the four walls of the school. It's under their purview. Yeah. Right. And we were questioning that last year. And I was okay. Yeah, it was uh, a little right. fuzzy enough. It's the only them hanging. That's. Well, we'll get you a copy of that agreement. It'll help. Great. As a taxpayer, mm -hmm. I pay for the school. Mm -hmm. I pay for the town. Yep. Why are they separate? <laughs> that's the that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. It all belongs to the town's people. Why yeah. do people make it so difficult to separate everything? I'll give you I, I don't get it. I'll give you four words. State of New Hampshire. Yeah. Just this is not a home right. rule state. And, our, and the legislature over the course of its Those guys were just infinite here. stupidity. <laughs> and yeah. no offense to the guys that were sitting here. Yeah. But uh, they have made it that way. And they've de designed it such that, you know, you have independent boards, you know, school board, you have the select board, you have cemetery trustees, library trustees, and some quasi separate ones like the, the assessors would be, you know, that have their own little purview, um, you know, stuff of, like, of that nature. They're all separate boards. But the school, library, yeah. cemetery, town all have their own budgets. Yeah. Where the others may not have a budget. Right, well, I get that. Yeah. You know, the budget thing. Sorry. But I just don't get why it has to they're be all... They're a simple, separate political entity. Too many micromanagers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Political subdivisions is a technical yeah. term they use in the RSAs. Okay, thank you. There you go. Yeah. That's why we can't tell the school what to do and they can't tell us what to do. Right. So, the future state march, say the RSA gets passed, or mm -hmm. the Warren article, excuse me, mm -hmm. in the backboard race. And I need a backboard replaced quickly. How is this? What's that? You gotta come see us. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll find a way. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you guys go without one. I, I don't think I can't speak for these two. No, no, you have, that, that would say, you know, that's something you need to rectify yeah. quickly. Yeah, the kids yeah, need yeah. to need yeah. it for the program. Yeah, you guys need that. to take and continue with the program right yeah. That was just an example because this year like I moved the thing and this weekend I just want to make sure that if something <laughs> happens we're good, but yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, well, they can dunk it. Yeah. Smash that backboard, then. Yeah. We got some pretty big high schoolers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I know. It's the coach yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the selectman is, is, would be your voice back to the So that will be the first. Okay, so you'd be our yeah. first step. I mean, let's talk about, like, what is our responsibility in relation to the state of, like, the softball field, right? And, and well, that's what that whole MOU was for. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. So, well, for a future date, yeah. once we read that. Yeah, yeah, and if you have questions or isn't clear, mm -hmm. um, you know, ask. Yeah. And if you can't make it here, I mean, you know, an email to Lena or something yeah. like that, or a phone call, she can relay it. She's our conduit from yeah. everybody yeah. else to us. And so we have to redo that field this year if it's possible, because mm -hmm. the infield is just it's atrocious. It's rocky. We've come in there with York rakes and it rocks. That, I mean, they're huge rocks. Yeah, they slide on that. Yeah, they're still you know? the same. So it's almost you got to dig down and bring in new it's stuff. It's not yeah. seed, but I think it's rock seed. I don't think it's seed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, you know, I mean, stuff like that. It's, it's done for It's going to have to be done. No, it's, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's past. I mean, it's maintenance. Okay, that's what I was saying. I know I've done a zillion of over at the Cross Town Little League and, yeah. and Allen Park. I have a question with regard to the budget and mm -hmm. um, now having a separate committee for Old Home Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we share the same, um, it's peering to me, so mm -hmm. I think I need clarification, that you have a line mm -hmm. item budget mm -hmm. for the year of, I'll just use the number I have in front of me as an example, mm -hmm. for uh, $5,000. Mm -hmm. I know, um, <clears throat> But yet, if that money is not fully used, like there was forty-five seventy spent for Old Home Day this year, who has rights to that money? It lapses. To but does the Parks and Rec? Because it's all under the same budget. When we used to run the Old Home Day, uh, the Old Home Day, very good question. if we had yeah. less money or we mm -hmm. didn't end up using it all, we could then use it for what we needed mm -hmm. um, in other. Uh, line items. Mm -hmm. um, the town voted on ten seven for last year, but the rec committee only saw nine hundred of it from a, from a dollar mm -hmm. value. Correct. So the the rest of the money was put into old home day, which I understand to be that it was the two fiftieth. Mm -hmm. So that it was an important day. Um, we had so six fifty seven eight. We had nine hundred dollars because all we had was excursions, mm -hmm. Easter, and Christmas. Because you, after the town voted, expunged all um, authorization to use it for basketball or softball. Mm -hmm. So that was an extra twenty five hundred dollars, let's say, that went back bless into bless you, the budget for somebody to use. Mm -hmm. I have a nine three seven here mm -hmm. as money spent year to date. It just doesn't make sense to me as how who's authorizing our where the money's going. I understand that you got you as a select board have the final say, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have two separate committees, what is the process, or what should what should I be expecting as a chair mm -hmm. for where our money is being dispersed when it comes to a large item is it's it's just under half of the budget. It's five months for nine hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Really. You know, that's can I, can I just speak on the software? Yeah. The the software that we have it groups like items together. Okay. So the Memorial Day has been uh, the hiring of a band all the time. It's yep, that's historical. Day. We know we don't no. touch that. Yep. Okay. No, nope, that's fireworks understood. That's understood. That's another that historical. Yep. That's why I didn't cost. talk about those. Yeah. And then the old home day, which originally was in the thirty five hundred range. And yes. We bumped it up for the two day event. Yep. And they made the attempt to fundraise or get donations to help offset some of those added costs. And they knew that that was their money that they had. The cap. The cap that they had to work. Okay. With. Um, I, All right. I just have a question. Now for next year, you had proposed or not proposed. But you had put. Um, we just looked at this year. Looking budget. at a different, yeah, we left. We did it at this year's budget. Budget. Mm -hmm. So like in before this two day event from last this past mm -hmm. old home day, it old home day is historically run at a budget of thirty five hundred. And that's where we put it back. Mm -hmm. So thirty five hundred of okay would be so we put it at three thousand. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I want I'd like to because we aren't in contact with Old Home Day, which I think should change a little bit in from a budgetary standpoint. Um, there are a lot, 
when we had facilitated Old Home Day, it was 100% free things for the community. We have, and then we had like little booth rentals so that way to help us pay for certain things like volunteer shirts and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, but now it's turned into people paying for, it's like a craft fair or a bake sale or, you know what I mean? So we are just cutting it down just by 500 because we, assuming, because there's lack of communication, that the booth rentals for people that are going to make a profit off of our community's old home day, there that will be your surplus in or their surplus in the but in their line budget. So we've deducted the five hundred, brought it down to three thousand. Um, the fireworks display was at forty five hundred for the um, two fiftieth because we wanted a bigger. Celebration. Nine thousand dollars. Right, because right. we had a rain out. Correct. Yeah. So we had an extra bonus. Mm -hmm. um, but when who Hammond, Les Hammond was on the board, we had asked for an eleven seven budget one year. So he agreed for the eleven seven if thousand of it could go to fireworks. So we are putting fireworks back down because we are requesting it less. Um, a, a, Two hundred dollar less line on you know mm -hmm. total budget, um, so the the fireworks display for next year will be three thousand. Can, um, can I just speak on that? Sure. Absolutely. I guess I was asked to communicate to the individual that sets those fireworks off to find out if in fact the cost of fireworks would increase and if this amount was adequate prior to this cut. Yeah. To show off a a, a decent uh, fireworks display because from the office. The comments that came in were yeah. they couldn't see them, they weren't high enough, and how could we do that? So that's where the this board, or maybe the board just before this board, decided to keep it at that 4500 to try to purchase taller. Yeah, taller one. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we went to that 4500 So much money for 15 minutes. Well, that's kind of my question is, is, is it really worth it as a taxpayer and on the March and Rec? This, this bites me sideways because... I don't really think, I don't think it justifies having fireworks every year. I really don't. I mean, yeah, I'm on the fire department. Yeah, I sit down here. I get my four bucks for standing down there for an hour, two hours, no, whatever it is. No, we don't. We don't get paid. Oh, that's right. Whatever. <laughs> but, you know, my, my problem is, is I don't understand why we have fireworks every single year. And, and maybe I'm a Scrooge when it comes to that. I mean, I love fireworks. Mm -hmm. I just can't justify Spend that every single year. We're talking about being fiscally responsible. Well, you see, for a rec, we have nine hundred dollars, but yet we have forty-five hundred for a fifteen-year fireworks display. And we can't take a tally on how many people show up to actually watch them. I count so then, you know, we do a head count, and you know how much each person represents. I can't justify it. I, uh, that's just me. I mean, I may be the only one in town that can't justify it. But yeah, I think that's a consensus. On I, I only see like 20 here and maybe 10 at the station, and there might be a couple sitting over there, and that's it. You know, the time that everybody puts in to set this all up, it, it, to me, it's not worth it. It's not worth that kind of money. Mm -hmm. I got the 250 uh, I'm all for it. Trust me. I'm a mm -hmm. patriotic man, and nobody can tell me otherwise. But no. I don't agree with mm -hmm. the uh, fireworks display. Eighteen thousand dollar an hour display. It's good living. So I mean, I, that's just, that that money could be brought somewhere else. If not into Parks and Rec, it could be brought somewhere else into the. Right. Mm -hmm. Not saying that we want that money essentially, but mm -hmm. you know, it's could be brought speaking anywhere. to fiscal responsibility mm -hmm. and you know due diligence to the community. Yeah, yeah we, we appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we'd really appreciate you considering what we put forth and how we've separated it. I'd like to speak to the excursions mm -hmm. because I'm usually the one that sucker that goes on the bus to Boston. Oh, that was a good time. You also organize. Well, she does. This is your she does organize. Oh, it, it is. It's a good time. And it was great having so many people this year that every year I like to give the bus driver a tip because that's what's been. Mm -hmm. That's why we charge normal? people to, when we say five dollars a head, but that's really for the bus driver. Oh yeah, we know that. Okay, good. Good. And, and and so that's why I said you're probably going to short your bus driver because well, you it's going to be ten dollars. I did in hoops. 
<laughs> so you know, she got she got her tip, and then I had the excess, which I gave back. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had people come to me and ask about a spring trip. Mm -hmm. They'd like to go, you know, to flower the show. to the flower show. Yep. Yeah. That necessarily maybe go to the flower show, but go to Boston. You know, so it's a flower show trip to the yeah. ball. And I've heard the we went about with that. Um, through the Garden Club, Cole's um, thing over there in Concord, mm -hmm. yeah. Cole's Garden thing. Yeah, yeah. And they do a bus out of the coach company. Great time. See, so that might be awesome. something the Garden Club would be interested in. Well, the Garden Club um, joining, you know, going on it, paying yeah. us our five dollars. Well, the things or $10, that if you whatever. coordinated with them, I'm sure they would, because I know every year yeah. we we used to, we'd go every year, but every other year, um, and it's just a great time. Because they take you, that bus takes you to the show in the morning. Right. Then they pick you up and take you over to Fennel Hall. And they pick everybody up at 4 o'clock mm -hmm. and then they bring you home. Mm -hmm. That's it's a great that day. We had, you know, a person, yeah, talked about as a, as a rec committee is Linda Nickerson is the shifting from the normal. The rate, these are all line items, as you said, Lee, that have been here for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. We really want to mm -hmm. reinvigorate the rec department, which is why we've moved some things around. But we have fresh ideas. Pat's idea with that ice skating rink is phenomenal, so you'll see more of that coming up, and mm -hmm. we'll be doing that soon. You know, you know some of the, uh, one other thing, um, the um, conservation folks try to do the hike a month kind of thing, and that would be a thing that you might get some coordination going on with also, you know, because they're already doing it. So maybe it's just adding to the email blast. Oh, yeah, the, the trails you know. are there. What is it? Uh, the, the recreation. Conservation. Um, conservation. Oh, the conservation. Brett St. Clair. Yeah. Brett St. Clair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's on the website too. It's on the town website, oh, yeah. and they have a link to a their own web page. Yeah. Okay. Well, that might be some untapped. Yeah, because they did well, some things. Well, they did thirteen well, hikes yeah. uh, this year, you know, around town. Yeah. But they they you know do things down yeah. to, at Timber Pond and other places here in town. So they do hikes. And well, back to your original question about the money side, you know. Yeah, old homes are down. I mean, that's earmarked for something separate, even though, like she said, the, the software groups it all together. I mean, technically, you know, it probably should be in another category somewhere, you know, budget wise. Um, I don't have a good answer for you. I don't know. Okay. You guys have any thoughts? I think how you illustrated it well, and nine hundred dollars is our budget. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. That's why we're sitting here. But you see these gigantic items for other activities right. that well, historically had we had access to shift around like old home day. But mm -hmm. obviously we don't now, and we're okay with that. We don't necessarily. Well, I mean, you guys don't do old home day unless you want it back. No, no. we don't. No, do that's what I said. Old home day. That was no. so. But you know yeah. what was really sad is the fact that we cried, you know, figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. for help mm -hmm. to do this event because we were only four at the mm -hmm. time. But then we, we, all, we come and say we're washing our hands of it, and now there's a committee of 12. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like just it. so sad. It's so sad to me that, it's a lot of work. you know, we I are, great, you know, we can work together. I, we do the sport parts. We, we, we have a person to facilitate the many hats that are worn within this type of committee. And it just... Well, it's, the other thing you might want to try, to, and I know we're off subject a little bit here. Sorry, yeah. That's okay. Reach out to the uh, Dunbot and Transition folks. And the other ones that's um, on John, the uh, uh, Kerber. What's his first name? Ken. Ken, Ken, Ken Kerber and John oh, Stevens. Okay. Because there were a lot of folks who wanted to, they wanted, they said they wanted to revitalize the rec committee, yet mm -hmm. they only see you folks. And, you know, and, and they were in here to see us, mm -hmm. Kerber and, and um, Stevens. And I, when I said that to him, I said, you know, people said they wanted to do this, but have they done it? And they haven't. But you might reach out to those guys because they might be able to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, I mean, we have town people wider. wanting to start, like the woman that approached us for pickleball. But her requirement for funding was like $450. So that was half of the 900 we yeah. had to use last what year. We had to turn away. Pickleball is a paddle game that used right. wiffle balls. So yeah. Indoor, yeah. in the community center, you use the gym, it's indoor. Mm -hmm. So we just couldn't, couldn't facilitate it at the time. So well, if you had seed money so that you could well, so we want to start well, to figure out. Then again, that's what your checkbook that is for, too. So. I mean, well, that's what we're going to do with our checkbook is start using it on the community center and down here. Mm -hmm. But we also want to make sure, because, you know, I, I've been really good about this this whole time, but I go back to the basketball thing. We had a budget that we put on there last year, and it got just totally ixnated. The total and, value didn't. And, yeah, well, the, to the, the, the line But what did. bothers me is the fact that, you know, 
my kid's been playing basketball. He's been in town four or five years, and he's wearing jerseys that you bought. And I swear, if I held them up and blew into them, they'd turn into dust. And that's a total insult to us as a town when they go to other towns. You know, so that's why if we have this extra money here and get rid of the fireworks, then you'll be fine. Well, I mean, a little bit of a historical on the basketball. We used to, on a regular basis, buy jerseys, equipment, and all through the registration fees. But we also had concessions going and used that concessions money to help. And that's what created that original checkbook because we were completely separate. We weren't part of the rec committee. We were completely autonomous. Yeah. I've been yeah. wanting to do it. Yeah, so can we do that? What's that? Break basketball off? No. Not no, not no more. I don't think so. Part of the problem is people. Yeah. I mean, we're... Look at us. We're five. Yeah. yeah. And, like, I'm sitting up in the stands wanting to watch my kid, and the coach is like, I need someone to run the scoreboard. Go down, run the scoreboard, you know? Even so who's going to volunteer to sell all the software? I love it. All but. the volunteers... Yeah, well, we, we, we did it, I can tell you, real quick and easy, was that every parent had to take a a tour in the, um, or parent or family took a tour in the uh, concession booth, or which was the kitchen. You know, we sold hot dogs, we had pizza that was in the oven, you know, the Helios pizzas, we sold that, drinks, popcorn, we actually had our own popcorn machine, we had our own pretzel machine, it, which is still probably down there, but it belongs to the Dumbarton basketball. So the facilities are quite well, now, you have specific names that are people that are in the kitchen. And that's, that's, that's the part of it. That, that and I've been trying to do that for softball. Like, we wanted a bigger building to try to get some way that you could have water in there so you can sell food because without water, you can't sell food. Right. That's an extra way to bring some money back into this so we can use it for other things. I remember they closed that down because of the health codes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do it anymore. No more. Right. Like if you get a tank up, you're running water. Yeah. You can sell closed goods like jet yeah. bags yeah. and chips, yeah. catering, yeah. drinks, and things like that. You couldn't sell food. You couldn't make anything. Yeah, no grilling. I think if there's a will, there's a way. I mean, it's going to take some coordination, some planning, and, and takes some effort. I don't disagree with you. Um, I mean, because rec is obviously an important thing that goes on in town. You know, I like say, you know, the best way is to be completely self-sufficient to the point we actually had extra money and we to actually have a, a pizza party at the end of the basketball season and everybody got an award as well, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, we still do that. But yeah, but again, yeah. they had pizza and all this, but it was all paid by the concession money. The funds paid for the Tri-Mountain uh, yeah, registration fees. Right, and but now it's registration money. So yeah. the pizza money is being, mm -hmm. uh, instead of concessions, we're mm -hmm. obtaining it when we charge $75 per kid. Right. But that's well, we could try going into the market, you know. So I do agree with you. We just collect the funds up front rather than over time through concessions. Right? That's one way to do it. Yep. So that's that's what's happening. I mean, yep. let's be realistic and mm -hmm. call a spade a spade. It's no, we still have pizza parties, right? Mm -hmm. Coaches still have shirts to Dunbar on it. Mm -hmm. They don't pay, but that's coming from somewhere and it's coming mm -hmm. from the registration. Well, I mean, we got to do farm raises that way the kids can get shirts too without yeah. having to pay for them. You know? Yep. That's not, I mean, there's options. I mean. No, I think I don't want to. I mean, belabor the point here all night. I mean, yeah, no, I, I won't go so back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, come see us. Yeah, talk to us. You know, you know okay. good ideas. Thoughts, so our feeling is, I mean, you can slice the budget any way you'd like. We do, and feel invigorated for 2016, and we would respectfully ask for a larger budget than $900 for us. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, we're five volunteers, and we do need money to make things happen. Um, and, and, Without town funding, we have a very limited opportunity to share recreation with the town. We, just, we have one community center, that's it. And to try to post everything in that is often difficult. Would you all agree that one's yes. yeah. It's always been a point yeah. of contention. Yeah. Any other questions for us? We're happy to answer them. Um, oh, it's still all good at the moment. Ice skating, I wrote that in the you know, website. Like, um, so, um, what's the gentleman? Pat Whittier. Pat Whittier has that pond right across from Heaven's Gas. Mm -hmm. So he's he has a sign out there that says skaters welcome. Mm -hmm. And no one's ever used it. We tried to skate on the other side and I watched a, a lady and her daughter get kicked off of there because whoever lives right there on the corner kicked everybody off and he puts posted signs up. He doesn't own the property. Posts a lot of private property. But he posts it so nobody can go on it so he can race his four wheelers and dirt bikes, whatever. So I talked to him, we talked to the PD, I'm not going to argue. So this yeah. guy is offering for a skater's welcome and he wants a bunch of people to use it. Mm -hmm. So I went out there with my four-wheeler and I cleared all the snow off. And, you know, obviously there's legalities we got to go through and check. But, you know, 
I, we have to check with him first of all if he yeah. allows people to go out there and get together and he has a little fire pit and you just go and skate we can get light towers but like i said we have to ask him if that's okay and then we got to have like documents signing that it's like a waiver say if they like, fall and get hurt mm -hmm. it's not on him right and it's not on the town either. Either. yes but we're so hoping to have as pat said uh, skating nights with donated thank you deb's family um lights <laughs> as well as hot chocolate or different things that you need as i said you know, a couple hundred bucks to, to facilitate maybe do that once a month or once a week just to get the community and the local place and because those are some of the more. ideas we want to do more and we want to do different things rather than hey here's the easter bunny again or here's the halloween party i have a coffin in the rec shed if you want it. i mean yeah i remember doing that when i was in <laughs> there years ago and we're stuck in easter eggs we're just trying to yeah. do stuff like park and rec is supposed to do stuff Out of the for the box. Right. Mm -hmm. We just need to, you know, we have the funds to do it. We, there's so many things we can do. Right. So we're just going to start doing it. And we'll start doing fundraisers, whatever mm -hmm. we got to do. I mean, we can't sit around and dwell on it anymore because it's, it's killing me, that's for sure. Yeah. I do have a question about things that we own. Mm -hmm. The town owns. The town owns all those Halloween things because we don't do the Halloween thing anymore. It hasn't been done for a couple of years now. Since I've been on. PTO does it now. We're out. Right. Right. And all in our wreck shed. Down what at the do school? we do? Yes. There's no room in our rec shed for basketball. Open the door and the balls fall out. Ted knows. He went in the shed this summer. He knows how packed that thing is. What, what's in there? But, there's some of it's junky, but some, there's there is a coffin decorations. and decorations. But what do we do? You know, we don't want to throw it out. But is it donatable? Is it? Town is it do we? Like it's town property. property. What? Bring, what happens? Can I bring it to I, the, You know. Rec budget from years past. I guess I mean, it depends on what it, its its value is. I mean, if there's no real intrinsic value, I mean, it could go in the, the trash, I think, but if it has a value, we'd probably have to, you know, surplus it officially. That's what we've, we've talked about. Like, it's an old... Thing. It's, old. A, it's a fabricated plywood Put it on the leave like, a penny, take a penny wall. That's exactly right. Same <laughs> so thing with old basketballs. I have flat old basketballs I love to throw away, but I haven't simply because I'm afraid they have some intrinsic value of a penny that I shouldn't be throwing away. No, you have to jump in the garbage. Yeah. All right, I just want to make sure again. We're, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's your well, we have the 4-H yeah. and we have the, um, yeah. the PTO that might be interested in some yeah. of that yeah. stuff. Hey, we we just weren't sure if we could share that. We don't want to just throw it out. We yeah, just we, didn't know if we, we could ask. offer it to another yeah, I would community, offer it out to community one of the committee that. Okay. And, okay. and then if there's no takers, then... Put it on the wall in the spring when it's open. Okay. And use your best judgment on what's garbage and what's not. Yeah. We'll let that be in the eye of the beholder when they come and see what they want to take. <laughs> yeah. I won't be there taking it. Okay, super. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, yeah, I've been thinking as we've been talking here as far as the budget goes. Uh, and that, this is just my two cents. I don't know what you guys think. But depending on whatever the budget ends up being, you know, and for example, we'll say for just easy numbers, we'll say Old Home Day is $5,000 and Fireworks is $5,000. And they only use four thousand each, hypothetically. There'd be two thousand dollars left there. Once the event is over, and it's part of their budget, I would think it'd be available for them to use. Well, it's bottom line budget, right? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, but once the events are over and everything is right. The unfortunate part is that event is in September. Yes, yeah, so how do we plan? Say, so how do they plan? Yeah, right. that's right. In, that's the end of the right. year. Now we're use or lose like like during the holidays. Well, those, so both of those things happen late in the year. Yeah. But then again, yeah, it happens in September. Okay, so September to October, you can buy jerseys, you can buy basketballs. You, you follow what I'm saying? I well, I, there, there, there was a I thing we asked for money for some basketball, mm -hmm. something, and we were mm -hmm. reminded that you had said no money was coming out of the of this budget for basketball. So we were told you need to use the checkbook. Well, I mean, that's the intent of that. So it is. Fun. I yeah, we, we you've spun that around a hundred times. I, we get the checkbook issue, but when we have a bottom line budget and there's money left over, now we're being you know we it was dictated that we couldn't use it for basketball, but that's what season we were in. That was what we were, we needed to do. So I don't, you know, that. I mean, this is the first time that I, since I've been on the board, that this has come up about the, the difference between, you know, having different committees and, you know, yourselves and, and one budget as a whole and, you know, where do you draw the line mm -hmm. question. It's not really coming. I mean, it's usually been pretty cut and dry. Here's what we want. And you yeah. guys leave. Yeah, but you have multiple committees here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is I mean the first time it's really come to light that I can 
But we had to get a new. We had to get a new committee because we couldn't do all of this in our own day. No, no, I understand. So a bunch yeah. of people wanted it. So cool. hey, that's cool. But the problem is, is they're spending money from our budget. Right. So therefore, maybe they should be a part of Parks and Rec. So that way, they we can discuss the budget. Absolutely. That's my biggest right. thing. Is don't if, if they don't want to be, then maybe they should be their own committee with their own budget. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what the and get rid of that budget. Yeah. Yeah. So they formed the whole own committee. Right. right. So they wouldn't impact right. the lack of help from them. Right. But we mm -hmm. kept the line in this group of oh, numbers. Maybe that line should come maybe out. We should be there. Okay. Go someplace else. Move yeah. another. Okay. It, it, the police on department has their own budget. The fire department has their own. Now, would old home day and fireworks come together? Because yes, they happen, it happens on the same. Yeah, as you said, that's where I was going. They're happening on the same it's day. The same day. So they're they're linked together. So why wouldn't they both go? Mm -hmm. So that would drop our budget line. That's all. Yeah, it's it's a big deal. I mean, right. I respect that you say if they don't use the money, that we should use it in other places. And historically, that's what we were done when we were organizing it. Mm -hmm. But if we're not organized with them, it's very difficult to say, okay, they have 2000 now I can get uniforms or I can get whatever right. I need. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to kind of have a preliminary budget in order to plan your year, so to speak, rather than a variable budget. No, I understand. Yeah. So that's, I love the idea. I mean, that's what we used to do. And Lee knows every December we put an order in for something so that we would have it for the next, yep. next the following year. It's just we haven't had that luxury for the past few years. Yeah. Um. I would note before we leave too is that softball. I don't know if you've been out there. There are no dugouts, mm -hmm. right? So we need to build dugouts. I don't know who that's coming from or what, and that's why you see softball is such a large line item this year, is because the dugouts need to be constructed, and we feel that the field needs to be resurfaced. Mm -hmm. So we think fifteen hundred is much less than it's going to cost, and we plan to use the checkbook for the other monies to the tune of two to one, meaning that we could potentially spend up to four thousand dollars on that. So that was within our budgetary discussion for so you know. Oh, I forgot to mention that. That was the last thing I have. I don't want to, again, your time's valuable. I don't want to keep it more. So I just want to make sure I get this right. So on the resurfacing in the dugout, you're looking to do a two-to-one kind of match to the town? Yeah, so if you think, it, from a softball perspective, we had... Deb can get into more detail. She worked with Master of Grand a couple of years ago, or a year ago. Yeah. Got an itemized list of the cost. Uh, we did have a significant amount of volunteer help to, to build, uh, as we usually do in this town. I know I helped with the bathrooms right now. Um, and we used her numbers, and then... $1,200. For labor. Just for or materials. For materials. Just for materials was around $1,200. Of the dugouts. That's buildings. Two dugouts? That, that's two dugouts, just straight up material cost. Yeah. So that using was then. Right. Yeah. So using that, um, we then evolved, and that's how we set two to one. So okay. two dugouts, and then the resurfacing is involves stone dust. It involves, I mean. We gotta dig down first. We have to dig down, okay. remove, and then bring stuff in. Um, I don't even think the bases are Babe Ruth compliant anymore, as now they have breakaway bases. Yeah. Um, we have post bases there, so we need to buy that equipment. Uh, in addition to the dugout, not only is it lumber, but you have to buy equipment to hang bats, helmets, those types of things. So we did, using our catalogs that we get, try to come up with a reasonable number, and it was approximately two to one. So that's what we had okay. planned. So, and from a basketball perspective, that's uniforms, as Pat is passionate about, as well as um, the league fees, retaining some of those league fees. So, sorry. And what about corporate sponsorship? Is I know Dunbar, Dunbar does not have a lot of that. Right, so it's difficult so for it, us. The league didn't allow it well, until don't. this year because oh. many towns are faced with the same thing. Sure. Um, whereas the league will potentially allow it. We have to get it approved by the league. I'm sure Capital Well or Pages Corner or J&J Landscaping would be happy to donate to the teams. Um, but again, it's, it's year over year, those uniforms are permanent, so we can't put a name on the back. Yeah, well, the yeah. <coughs> but you know... Um, I'm Are we just talking thinking, basketball or softball? Um, anything. I'm just thinking in general, you know, yeah. sponsorship for any of the sports. Yeah. But uh, what about signage on the uh, on the uh, fields? Well, that, that's, I've that's seen that yeah. in some places. You know, we don't have an outdoor. We don't have the fence. I mean, you drive by Goff Sound. It's awesome. It has all the companies. Yeah, right. There, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have no fence there, so we can't. Yeah. It's also a nightmare getting it. <laughs> yeah, moaning and mm -hmm. Uh, no. So yeah, we've, we've tried to think of those types of things. Yeah. And uniforms, you think, just put it on the front. Well, if it's a uniform we retain, mm -hmm. what if yeah, Henry's yeah. Auto Body's out of business next year, yeah, right? right? We're not going to have Henry's on the front of it. And mm -hmm. That's that's 
good point. A lot about about people people. do the little do t-shirts. Yeah, they'll do t-shirts, yeah. Yeah, and, and again, t-shirts you keep, right? And the uniforms that we have, we're, we're not keeping. So, mm -hmm. young kids we do. Kindergarten through second grade, they get to keep a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. But for the older kids, that's just something that every team has the same exact uniform. First grade mm -hmm. to okay. eighth grade. Twelfth grade. I said eighth grade now. Twelfth grade is the whole. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. And by all means, you know, if you think of something or need something, you can give me an email or a call, or if you have time, stop in and see us. Yeah. Put on the agenda. The I mean, that's what we're here to take and do. It. You know, you know, once a year to see you guys is probably not enough. Yeah, that's how we started. I really extend the olive branch in terms of yeah. we need to communicate more. We're all trying to accomplish the same goal. Every Thursday. I don't have everything. Throw them in the basket. Something for them to talk about. So yeah. if you can't yeah. make it, then email's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, and if something comes up where you uh, have a community member that has said, you know, something that has to do with something that we can speak to, by all means, invite us. Yep. You yeah, know. Absolutely. Or, or push them our way, right? Or I mean, send them our way, you know. But if it's something that does ultimately yeah. have to be you decided. Guys have we are trying to get on a schedule to do that. Because we know we put you on the town calendar on the website well, so people will find you. I know, you. know you've been, I've tried. She's yeah. been, yes. She's been doing her job. <laughs> well, thank you for having right. you. Thank, thank, thank you. It's our pleasure. Yeah. Do we want to do minutes real quick? Yes. See how we haven't done those? Yep. Okay, I didn't forget. No. All right, I will make a motion that we approve the um, selectmen's meeting minutes from Thursday, January 14, 7 p.m. as written. Second. Any discussion? Negative. Hearing yeah, none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair Allison will sign up for you. I'll leave you hanging, holding the bag, Bob. Um, no, I was going to be late. That's why I came in. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, make a motion to approve the um, meeting minutes from Thursday, January 14. These are the uh, Non-public meeting minutes. Sure. Well, we got one more set of minutes in. Oh. Right. I'm gonna make you stop. Uh, any discussion? No. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ted needs a bottle. Aye. Okay. We're in the recess. All right, I'll wait till Ted comes back on this one. Yep. That. I have to get support. She'll have to link it to that one for history when the auditor needs to see what's been mm -hmm. spent and ask for mm -hmm. certain invoices. Um, the only place that I could think of that we could put it instead of creating a new budget, because then right. again, these accounts are all tied into the DRA. Mm -hmm. So I have to, you know. If there's if it's if it falls under the definition of our, mm -hmm. DRA has like a forty page definition for account four five two zero. Oh, so these account numbers. Oh, those are their numbers. numbers. And then so everybody four has the same two, account two numbers. Zero. Well, so every town has the same account number for the same thing. Yes. Oh, no, it, that box I number. Something new today. There I mean, go. some of them may Nothing only use one. Numbers. One, mm -hmm. you know, four one four zero. We've broken it out with sub mm -hmm. areas within that group, but yeah. it has. It falls under the definition. Ooh. I have to look at that group of numbers. I mean, it's not going to be easy to move, and you know, so be it. But I mean. What I think I'm going to do, and, and, and I maybe I, I lack of communication to them, we had the same issue with the welfare director. So I think when I send mm -hmm. them their budget, I'm going to send just the lines that apply to them. Yeah. Because it may be within the group, but their budget is what these mm -hmm. numbers are. 
I can do that. I can give them a partial section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just say these are your, I, I, your, you know. Okay. Accounts. Are we uh, re adjourned. Okay. Yep. Right. I will uh, make a motion to uh, accept the non-public um, selectman's minutes from January 14. Second meeting. Yep, second meeting. That's right. That's why they were two on the same. This was 10.30 p.m. Second meeting. Yeah. set up by the state. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see some system breakdowns of some of the revenue that we collect, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the category, if you look at that taxes, for example, there's one, two, three, four, actually five numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom ten of them are 3190, so that's why you see that the mm -hmm. system breaks it out, but it's actually a one item that mm -hmm. we budget and one item that we uh, report to the DRA. Mm -hmm. So land use change tax, we collected 13,950, mm -hmm. but there's still a, a $4,000 balance, more or less, that has to be transferred to the Conservation Commission because now that I'm merging, it's a, it's a little bit different when it was done. I'm merging the tax revenue into the funded county and trying to utilize the software to talk to each other. Oh. Whereas before I used to hand enter all the journals. Okay. And I would separate them so what the town saw in the land use taxes was actual mm -hmm. land use. But there's still a small portion of that 13950 that's going to get moved over. So this part of this 13950 goes to the Conservation Commission. Correct. Which I have the number here. Um, it's 4,600, which is still due to the conservation. So the actual is going to be a little less when I report it. So I've gone ahead and um, recommended the 10,000, which is our portion, assuming we had collect 20,000, which 10 of it would be conservation, and we don't account for that. Um, I have heard, we actually had a transfer today from Zachary Drive, that's a current use penalty, that sold for 118 so there'll be at least $10,000 there for one current use penalty. There are a few lots mm -hmm. out there that are potential building lots that could, um, mm -hmm. you know, change hands and will trigger that current use, but we typically mm -hmm. will keep it on a little lower end, and then as the revenues come in, it just increases our bottom line. So I recommended the land use change tax at 10 grand. 10 is our portion. Yeah. Our so portion, yep. Yeah. Um, and then the yield tax, that's all the timber tax when people apply for um, wood cutting. Oh, by the way, there's an IRS, uh, a bill up there. There's one on the list just for everybody's education when you talk about timber cutting. Mm -hmm. Uh, House Bill 1436 exempts tree clearing for solar pan uh, for solar from timber tax and notification. Well, so if someone wants to put up a, uh, a solar farm, if this passed, in theory, you'd get no revenue from the timber cutting. So, a solar farm? Yeah, yeah. I mean, say you get a big field one, you know, or make it a field so you can convert it to solar or something. I know there are some exemptions. Some of them are within striking distance for using for your own personal mm -hmm. use, if you're converting from a right. forest to a field, those are all e exempt yeah, categories, those. so it's just another one of those. It'll just be another one, so. Yeah. Mm. So, um, historically we've kind of left it 
that line at 15,000 sometimes will be just a, a tick underneath. And it says this year, yield taxes, but it's actually just timber? Yep, it's all t timber, okay, and that's so. what we collected through December. Um, then we drop down to interest and costs and properties. That's on the um, taxes from the late taxes. That's strictly uh, liens and interest that's for delinquent taxes. So we leave, usually leave that at 15. Um, again, the next line is interest and costs for yields tax when a, a timber tax isn't paid on time. We don't usually fill anything in there. Um, interest and cost on liens, that's another category. First one's for yeah. current property taxes, second one's for lien property taxes. And then, um, so bottom line for that category, I recommended the $51,000 for revenue budgeting, and then we move on to licenses, permits, and fees, which is... Um, Can I ask a question? Yep. Yeah. Uh, 390.04, other costs and fees.